President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris paid their respects Wednesday at the Flight 93 National Memorial to honor the 40 passengers and crew that died in the rural swath of Pennsylvania on September 11, 2001. The President and Vice President laid a white and red wreath at the memorial. They then strolled the fields of the expansive memorial, which includes a long granite walk that marks the path of the flight with large concrete walls framing the distant view of the sky. The times of the crashes of the other hijacked flights are inscribed on the flight path walkway. Both spoke with Flight 93 families in attendance. At least one attendee spotted in the crowd of about 200 was wearing a t-shirt that included vulgar anti-Harris sentiments. The man sporting the t-shirt said he wasn't related to any of those who died in Shanksville. On October 7, Hamas, a terrorist organization, slaughtered 1,200 Israelis, many of them young people who were simply attending a concert. Women were horribly raped. And so absolutely, I said then, I say now, Israel 
has a right to defend itself. We would. And how it does so matters. Because it is also true, far too many innocent Palestinians have been killed. Children, mothers. What we know is that this war must end. It must when end immediately, and the way it will end is we need a ceasefire deal and we need the hostages out. And so we will continue to work around the clock on that. Work around the clock also understanding that we must chart a course for a two-state solution. And in that solution, there must be security for the Israeli people and Israel and in equal measure for the Palestinians. But the one thing I will assure you always, I will always give Israel the ability to defend itself, in particular as it relates to, as it relates to Iran and any threat that Iran and its proxies pose to Israel. But we must have a two-state solution where we can rebuild Gaza, where the Palestinians have security, self-determination, and the dignity they so rightly deserve. Uh, President Trump, how would you negotiate with Netanyahu and also Hamas in order to get the hostages out and prevent the killing of more innocent civilians in Gaza? If I were president, it would have never started. If I were president, Russia would have never ever i know putin very well he would have never and there was no threat of it either by the way for four years have gone into ukraine and killed millions of people when you add it up far worse than people understand what's going on over there but when she mentions about israel all of a sudden she hates israel she wouldn't even meet with netanyahu when he went to congress to make a very important speech she refused to be there because she was at a sorority party of hers she wanted to go to the sorority party she hates Israel. If she's president, I believe that Israel will not exist within two years from now. And I've been pretty good at predictions, and I hope I'm wrong about that one. She hates Israel. At the same time, in her own way, she hates the Arab population because the whole place is going to get blown up. Arabs, Jewish people, Israel. Israel will be gone. It would have never happened. Iran was broke under Donald Trump. Now Iran has $300 billion because they took off all the sanctions that I had. Iran had no money for Hamas or Hezbollah or any of the 28 different uh, spheres of terror. And they are spheres of terror.